On the other side of the coin, once you're already in a position, say you brought a, bought a breakout right at 10 as it's moving into a stage two uptrend, um, how should traders and investors manage the position using your methods? And do you wait for a stock to break certain key moving averages and sell on weakness? Or do you also kind of look to sell some into strength and sell proactively at all? You're asking so many good questions and there's really a lot of answers there depending on who you're talking to. But let's start right. out with the investor. For the investor, it's really easier. Um, he should, or they, she, depending who they are, they should buy initially at least half the position when it breaks out. Then when you see it's not a false breakout, let's say you bought it when it went through 10 and a half, and hey, it only went to 11, then it fouls up and it breaks back into maybe nine and a half. It's not working right. Right. You're not going to buy any more, and I'd start reducing. Mm -hmm. Conversely, now let's be optimistic. It broke out to 10 and a half. It ran up to 13. Okay, you're very happy. Now it pulls back, and it really, the, the old ceiling of resistance, Richard, should now be the floor of support. Mm -hmm. Roughly. So it now pulls back 10 and a half, 11, it holds where the breakout was by the, the other half of the position. You know it's good, and especially the volume came in on the breakout, and the volume should decline as it pulls back. You, you, you're now done. Boom, you're fine. Now the investor just basically rides it. But even an investor, because mm -hmm. what I'm saying now is very different than when I wrote my book in the late 80s. We're dealing with the new norm. This market is no longer the markets I played in the 70s and 80s. This mm -hmm. is, oh my God. I kid around with clients. A lot of times they say, you can't go to the bathroom and come out without being surprised here. This market is moving at warp speed. So yeah. even in an investor who bought the stock at 10 and a half, and let's say it becomes extended and it runs up to 16 in a hurry, and right. it's 50, 60% above its 200-day moving average, I would then not be looking to sell. That's the wrong word, but the right word is trim or reduce. Right. When something gets very extended, I would then say, let's take some off. I always kid around with my institutional clients and I say, profit taking is not a dirty word. You take a little off. And again, it depends on the individual market player. Some will take off 20%. Some will take off 30, 40%. You take some off when it becomes extended, you know, watch for things like, remember I'm talking as a trader. Now mm -hmm. the stock has run up. It's extended. Now it's starting to churn sideways. It's no longer advancing on good news. You take a little bit off and hey, you'll put, let's say you took 25% off, it pulls back ideally toward the 50-day moving average, which is a short-day moving average, it holds there, you start putting it back on. So that's how the investor plays. The trader plays a whole different game mm -hmm. and the trader has to be on top of it night and day. When he sees it, the stock is extended, boom, he should take off much more than the investor does. And then if down the road, Richard, at any point, I'm talking for traders now, at any point, the stock breaks below its 50-day moving average, the trader should be 100% out while mm -hmm. the investor should be cutting back further. Mm -hmm.